I have had some envelopes on the back of my desk for weeks now and I wanted to make something with them and I thought why not make an old school envelope flip book. So these are the envelopes. I'm just choosing three because I want to make it nice and small. And first off, I've got to remember how to make the flip book. So the way that I make them is that I fold the envelope flap back and then use that to attach it to the next page by putting that inside the pocket. So I'm hoping you can see that a bit better than I can explain it. There we go. So putting the flap of the previous one inside the next pocket and then I will go back and I will adhere all of those so that it stays nice and secure. If I wasn't adding a cover onto this, I would then use the last one to wrap back round to the front, um, but I decided I want a cover on this. So I'll show you how I stick this all together. If you are new here, hello or welcome, it's great to see you. Please do make sure to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you around here again. I make all sorts of crafty videos, mostly happy mail and 3D projects, that sort of thing. But you'll find a little bit of everything here. Here we are sticking that together. I don't know how long it has been since I've made a flip book like this. I think this is something I used to make years ago. And I see lots of pretty versions of these. Sticking that down with my Nuvo glue. And here I'm showing you that if I wasn't adding a front cover, I would flip the last one round and into the first pocket like so. In fact, I think I do that. Anyway, do I stick that down? I do. But then I decide that I want a proper cover. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I think I just want an excuse to use more of these pretty papers. So these papers are from the Keeping Cool collection from Rosie's Studio. And I'm just measuring the size of the envelopes. I want my cover to be a slight bit bigger than that. And then I want to add some kind of space for a spine as well. So working out how big my envelopes are and where I want my spine to start. I make the spine way too big in the beginning, but I go back and fix it shortly. So here's what I come up with first. And I'll show you how I score that and realize I've got way too much space to fill. Even if my envelopes end up chunky, I don't think I will ever fill that much space. So I make my spine slimmer. Still room to make the envelopes chunky, but not so much that it's going to be wasted space. So I make my spine thinner and then just cut that amount off of the flap at the back I believe so that it stays the right size there we go and then I realized that I want to make this way more stable than just the plain card and I work out a way to do that shortly which I will share with you there we go checking that they fit I did have all of the sizes for the papers for the outside of the pockets and the full pages written down there, but they aren't correct. So please do check the description box. As you can see here, I'm messing with them as I actually cut the papers. So make sure to check the description box for the sizes. Obviously, depending on what envelopes you use, depends on the size. But in case you happen to have these ones in your stash, I will share the measurements with you. I have stitched around the edge of this piece. And this is going on the front of a pocket, just sticking down that extra piece on the actual envelope. It's one of those envelopes where you flip up the um, piece sort of under the opening and the one from the top as well. So I'm just putting that out of the way. Then adding more card inside the little pocket there so that it acts sort of as a liner. Obviously it doesn't go all the way down, but it covers the bit you can see. On to creating the pieces for the front. So I decide that I want this really pretty starfish paper in front of the orangey one that I chose. And this is what I came up with to make it a bit more sturdy. I've got some recycled craft card here and I'm just cutting it slightly smaller than my mounting pieces. So that's the piece with the starfish. 
and sandwiching it in between the two pieces of pretty card and I'm doing that for the front, the back and the spine. So just sticking the pretty paper onto the craft card, using some double sided tape for that. And I've already pre-stitched my pretty papers as well. I like to do a zigzag stitch down the spine. So I've got that on the spine and then I've just got running stitch along at the edges of the front and back covers. There we go, adding that craft card. And then when I stick it on to the orangey colour here, it just makes it a bit stronger. I love this really thick tape from Craftalier. I've had a look and you can't buy it singularly, or at least I can't find it. So I need to order some more of the multi-size packs so that I have more of that thick one. Using one of the other sizes here. It is really handy actually to have the one with all the different sizes. Again, adding craft card and then sticking that down. And I do the same on the inside as well. So I'm going to add the envelopes on the back cover. I'm just going to stick that straight down. But before I do that, I'm going to sandwich a piece of this craft card in between the back cover and the envelopes. Similar to the front, just sticking this on the back of the envelopes and then sticking that down. It just makes it a bit stronger. It means I don't have to worry about wrapping the um, chipboard or the craft card. I did this because I'd already chosen my papers and I didn't want to have to re-choose them and wrap chipboard and things. So this is a quick and easy alternative. Choosing more of the pretty papers and adding those on. I wanted the pom-pom trim on the edge of this so that it would poke out of the book. I stitch it on, but it goes wonky. I didn't let the glue dry for long enough, really. So there you go. I'm not very happy with that stitching, but it looks pretty um, nonetheless, I guess, on there. It looks pretty in a not-so-perfect kind of way. I think probably I'm the only one that would notice. It's one of those things that crafters would pick up on and anyone else would just think was done on purpose. Choosing some more papers for the inside and the outsides of the pockets. I love this paper with the little cars on there. Super summery and fun. And then I cover the inside as well. So the inside cover has that pretty parasol paper. You can see it on the left there. I don't think I show you sticking that down. I must have skipped that, but um, I've covered the two bits of craft card for the spine and the inside cover. All of my papers are now on my pockets, my envelopes rather, and I'm just adding different trims to poke out of the side. I think that looks really sweet when the book's closed. And I'm using hot glue to add those on because I didn't want to stitch them and have the same problem as before. I've learnt from my mistake, I'm using hot glue from now on. And I'm just sort of sealing the edges with a bit of hot glue because I don't have a lighter on my desk at the moment. Usually I'd heat seal the edges, but my lighter has disappeared, so I need to remember to grab a new one. This blue trim is beautiful. I'm sure I got sent it in a swap. It's really, really pretty, and it works perfectly on that edge there. Sealing the ends of that one. Using these little blue, blue, sorry, pink. These little pink finger protectors, which are fantastic from Hobbycraft. Stops you getting your fingers burned under the hot glow. And we're finished. So this is our little envelope book, all ready to be decorated. I do actually have the decorating process ready and up now for you to watch. So I will link it at the end on the end screen and I will hopefully catch you over there. Thanks so much for hanging out and crafting. See you next time. Bye.